and where uh, timing is everything right that's the phrase timing is is critical in this case and it's uh, of course it's not always a calendar timing uh, because you it be, might be slightly different in different parts of the country but typically uh, mid to late June to early to mid July and you're really hoping to get late softwood or early greenwood cuttings and essentially a softwood cutting is a new shoot that hasn't completed growth. Uh, this is one that see has not set its terminal bud. Uh, so that is still a softwood cutting. It's not a greenwood cutting until it is ceased growth and that's going to be usually late summer and then there's a terminal bud. So you can see with this Elizabeth cutting there's the bud. This is, is essentially stopped growth and you can see the leaves are fully developed. The stem is pretty stiff. So that's a greenwood cutting. The uh, another type would be a hardwood cutting, which for a deciduous plant would have dropped its leaves, it's dormant, uh, and there are some species that that don't root well from softwood or greenwood cuttings, but they might root better as a hardwood cutting. Uh, the trade-off is you typically don't you re require higher percentages of rooting hormone. You may not have real high percentages. A benefit, though, with hardwood cutting for deciduous plants is you don't have to have them in a mist system to keep the humidity high because you're not losing a lot of moisture. Um, and so, again, with, with all these, these stem cuttings that are softwood or greenwood cuttings, it's really important uh, to, to maintain the moisture so they don't dry out before rooting. And that's why if it's under mist, the mist is not there to water the plant. It's just to keep the humidity high. If you have, uh, if you're sticking your cuttings in uh, either under a high humidity dome or you could make your own uh, sort of mist tent using PVC or something else to make a frame and then cover that entirely in like clear polyethylene. And uh, one other thing that we've often done when we use that technique is use uh, one of those um, cool mist humidifiers and it has the little sort of vibrating plate that creates mist. That's something that you use in your home to keep the humidity high. And uh, you may have to fill that daily depending on what the setting is. But that, again, the purpose is not to water the your cuttings, but just keep the humidity high so they don't lose moisture and desiccate before they root. Okay, so for technique here, uh, we're doing uh, stem cuttings. Uh, I do like to have, uh, lo collect larger cuttings that I'm actually gonna stick so that I can cut those down to size. Uh, as far as collecting material, it's really ideal to collect your cuttings early in the morning so that they don't dry out. It's, it's ideal to have a cooler uh, with something, you know, a cool pack in it. We often will, um, if you've got the cool pack or ice and put some newspaper or something to separate the cuttings so they're not directly on the ice. So put the cultivar name, put the date, and then if in this case we're using um, 8,000 parts per million uh, IBA, endobutyric acid, that's a, a, a auxin. Auxin is a plant hormone that's associated with rooting. For these magnolias that are that are uh, late softwood and greenwood cuttings, they, they typically need higher uh, concentrations of endobutyric acid or auxin. That's 8,000 parts per million. We're using, uh, okay, uh, so right. this is three parts perlite and then one part peat moss or if you don't have peat moss but you have a potting mix it's mostly sphagnum peat moss you can use that so this is different than what you would pot up rooted plants in it has much more drainage uh plenty of oxygen enough peat moss to hold moisture but where you don't have roots when you first stick them you you're not uh, um you don't need to hold as much water you want to keep it moist you want plenty of oxygen there uh because for respiration, plants still need oxygen. And I like to have at least um, two nodes. I often start with three, so a node is a place where leaf and bud originate. Uh, a lot of times, commercial propagators will cut these leaves in half. Uh, that gives you more room. Um, you, need, um, you, you typically want at least a leaf uh, so that when it roots, it has something photosynthesizing sure, sure. to, to you know, su support continued growth. And uh, I could remove this one and leave just this one leaf here, but when I can, I like to leave leave two. And it's the same thing with buds. If I, I ideally will have two buds if I can. That way, if one of these is dead or dying or injured, 
then I've got the other one to take over and, and uh, develop as a shoot. So as far as um, technique, um, I'm going to cut this again. I'm going to cut this at an angle. And for smaller cuttings, that might be more important because you have a greater surface area there. And then I'm going to wound the cutting. I'm going to go right through the bud on this side. I'm going to bury that so I don't need that one. Wounding does a couple of things, at least a couple of things. One is it creates a surface for that hormone that we're going to dip it in to make contact. The wound also um, sort of stimulates some of the physiological activity that's associated uh, with adventitious root formations, hormonally and, and other sort of phytochemicals. So, um, I, again, we have the hormone over here. This is the product right there. And I'm going to dip this. I'm going to set it right here. And then... So you don't need a lot. You're just dipping it, especially covering. I cover the whole base of it, but especially cutting the wounded portion. Tap that off. And then I'm going to go from back to front. I've already labeled this row right here. Set that in, burying it, um, that bottom portion, and then just press that in right there. So that's one cutting, bigger cuttings. And then sometimes people will wound both, especially with hardwood cuttings. And I'm uh, going to remove these um, leaves. I'm still just going to leave two. Uh, I might be able to have three nodes. I'm still going to wound this. It's a thinner cutting, so I, um, you can see I've got to be a little bit more careful with the wound there. So, again, I've already got a label there. That's two stones. Um, I didn't... Here we go. There's the hormone. One thing I didn't do, though, is pre-dibble it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And it, it's sometimes easy if you do it first to so get a straight line, but... So I like, again, I like to stick from back to front so they're not in my way, but that's not you know, super important. But it's, that's, it's essentially, for the most part, done growing uh, for the season. Okay. The leaves are, are fully enlarged. They're a little stiffer. They've developed, you know, cuticle. And then this terminal bud is set here. So different species have sort of different growth patterns, but uh, in this case, this is essentially for the most part. There might be other shoots on the plant, that are not growing but done growing but so this is a greenwood cutting and again for a lot of magnolias that's a preferable stage uh, for rooting so these are I'm leaving two leaves here I'm gonna make that angular cut and then wound the side um, and again that's just gonna create increase area for contact for the hormone and then I pre dibble these so that's gonna go back there in the first one Okay, it's, it's really quite flexible. So it's a softwood this cutting? This is a softwood cutting, right. I'd call it a late softwood cutting because, again, not just because of the calendar date, but we know that on these these plants that they're really close to becoming greenwood, and probably some of the shoots on this plant um, had already terminated growth. Right. Right. So you're plant like, material yeah. from something, right? So it's a smaller stem, but we can still wound it. So again, the technique is going to be the same. Um, I'm going to be the Japanese hotwood tree. Yeah, the, um, the squirrel seed dropping in the nut is heart shaped. Yeah, yeah, it's a real cool tree. Squirrels dropping uh, nuts on us right now. It might be developed enough so that we can't get through with a knife. You know what I mean? <laughs> There's an anti-hammer valve because there's a lot of force when that kicks on. And the filter, pressure reducer, uh, and then there's the actual solenoid itself. Pattern somewhat, you know, um, the, the sort of the mist pattern. And you typically will want to set that up based on, um, so ideally you want thorough coverage here, right? Um, 